What type of cardio is best for fat loss? On one hand, we have traditional endurance training, otherwise referred to as steady state. The clue is in the name on this one. If you are able to maintain a steady pace for an extended period of time, this is steady state. If you ran at your absolute maximum speed, you know, if you were being chased by a really fucking angry hippo or an annoying herbal life rep, you wouldn't be able to maintain that speed for very long. Hence why steady state is often referred to as moderate intensity, irrespective of how fucking hard it might feel. On the other hand, we have interval training, where you intersperse periods of very high intensity work with low intensity work or complete rest. If you sprint from one herbal life rep for 10 seconds and then you hide behind a corner while you catch your breath, ready to sprint again, this is reminiscent of high intensity interval training. Interval training kind of overtook and became the cool thing to do, believed to be better for body composition. And there are a couple of big reasons for this. Although interval training tends to be shorter, it is believed that you would burn more calories after your workout, which is often referred to as the afterburn effect. Probably because the real term, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, is admittedly a few smidges less catchy. It has also been proposed that high intensity interval training might be better for increasing lean body mass, and a plethora of side-by-side -side photos like this one have been creeping their way onto the internet. Regular endurance training kind of fell out of fashion, and high intensity interval training became the new kid on the block that was better looking, had more charisma, and way better fashion sense. And of course, people are going to get drawn in by the allure of this better looking sibling, especially when some research did genuinely look at it favourably, like this review paper concluding that it resulted in 28.5% greater reductions in fat mass. This review paper was later retracted, by the way. Not all research was quite as favourable, like this review paper that concluded that interval training would lead to similar body composition changes, but in a more time efficient manner. Which is still a good thing, it just tickles the proverbial testicles a lot less so. In the interest of being concise, let's dive straight into a brand new meta-analysis on the topic, which is the most comprehensive to date, and compared steady state to interval training studies, which measured body composition changes after a minimum of four weeks. In review papers like this, they pull lots of different studies together. As a handful of examples, some research papers control for nutrition, and some don't. Some are in combination with a reduced calorie diet, and some aren't, and some have different training frequencies to Others. And when pooling all of these research papers together, they concluded that when it comes to lean body mass changes, exercise intensity didn't really appear to make much difference at all. And a similar conclusion when looking at fat mass changes. Exercise intensity appears to make very little difference to how much body fat someone actually loses. But there is perhaps a bigger takeaway from this review. On average, the total amount of body fat that people lost was two smidgens above fuck all. It was about half a pound over a 12 week period. Which leads me on to something that I've said before, which did cause a lot of people to angrily misplace their excrement. Cardio interventions in isolation do not reliably result in significant fat loss. If you tell a big group of people to start doing cardio without any other advice, there is a strong likelihood that at least a large chunk of them will get underwhelming results. Reason one, the overall duration required to result in significant fat loss is probably more than your average person in the gym is doing. It is an unfortunate and inconvenient truth that a couple of half hour runs per week is not going to result in a huge number of calories burned. Reason number two, there are compensatory mechanisms at play. People who crank up their cardio output might notice a subsequent increase in appetite, which subconsciously nudges them towards consuming more food, which of course can wipe out the calorie deficit that the exercise imposed. It is also possible, although less studied and less agreed upon, that if you increase your exercise activity thermogenesis, you may subconsciously decrease your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is just a fancy way of saying if you exercise more, you may move less elsewhere, like going for a long run, returning home, feeling knackered, and then falling asleep on the sofa. Conclusions. Based on the research that we have now, the intensity of cardio training doesn't appear to have a hugely significant impact on body composition changes. Interval training may be more time efficient, but it also comes with more effort. Not everyone is going to love sprint training, for example. So pick whatever suits your personal preference and understand that what you do with your nutrition is going to be much more important than what intensity you do your cardio at.